Welcome to part three of the day table or the calendar table series. This video is all about creating a day table in Power Query. Now the first part of the series was about what is a calendar table and how to create one in Excel. The second part was how to create one in DAX. And you probably noticed both of those had their flaws. So this, to me, is the perfect way to do it. The only downside, only downside to this is sometimes the queries can be slow. The overall data model refresh, this particularly, you know, is more about Power BI, but the total refresh can be slower uh, if you do it this way, but it gives you all the dynamic, you know, options that you need to create a calendar, which you've always wished for. And let's see how we do that. So uh, we start with the same three tables as we did through, through the, the entire series thus far. Uh, the only difference will be this. So uh, I've already put this two in. I'm going to put this one now. So into Power Query. So we go data from sheet that could also say from range or from table range, depending on your version. And now we have all three tables in are in Power Query. So now we want to create a calendar table. Now, here's where you have to think about it. What dates will I slice and dice by? And remember, we said in every part of the series thus far, we don't need this dates. That's not something we're interested in. What we're interested in are the dates in the forecast table and the dates in the sales table. Now, because both of those will impact our calendar, we need to create a single column of dates derived from both of those. So what we will do will be something like this. We're going to take the sales table and we're going to create a reference to it. We're going to call this calendar, although it's kind of far from it at this point, but we're going to call this calendar. We're going to remove all other columns in but the date column, that's the only one we need. I'm also going to change the data type to date only. I don't need it to be date time. And what I would prefer to do also is to put all the dates down to the start of year. I will do that simply by doing a transform date year start of year. So I don't have thousands of dates from a single year because the only thing I'm actually interested in at this point is which years are there, right? Um, so that's something I would do, but over here it's redundant because I, I just have January 1st, uh, but I do need my dates from the forecast. So I'm gonna reference that one also. I'm gonna remove all other columns and I'm gonna create a date out of this. And I'm just going to call this a helper calendar because this one will not be loaded into the final model. Only the calendar will be. And now I will append this to the calendar, right? So I have the date and now I will append that all those days deriving from the forecast table to the first one. This is where you have to be careful. The names of the columns have to be the same. And it's very good if the data types of the columns are the same. Right. Uh, that is something to look out for when you want to append two uh, tables. So I have the first one here. I'm going to go home, append queries. As I want to start with this one, I'm not going to go append as new, which I could. But I'm just going to leave it like this and append H calendar. So helper table. And there it is. If the names of the columns were not the same, I would have gotten two columns now. Um, so that's something to really look out for. OK. And now I have all the dates that are present in my data model, or at least the ones that I want to slice and dice by. But the problem is some are duplicated. So I'm just going to go right click and I'm going to go remove duplicates just so I have, you know, only 
single date. And again, before this, I would have gone transform date, year, start of year. But again, it doesn't make any difference here because they're all January 1st. Okay, now that I have this, I would usually do this. I would go create a duplicate of this column. And I want to call the duplicate date two. So I'm just going to remove all of this and I'm going to call it date two straight in the step. I could rename it and I'll get an extra step that would say rename. I'm just going to leave it as is. So now I have the date and the date two columns. Now the date two column, I would actually want that one to be the end of year. Right? So these are my starts of year. Now these I want to be my end of year. So I'm going to go transform date year and I'm going to go end of year. Okay. So now these are my starts and these are my ends. And now I'm going to do something which will not make sense in the beginning, but you'll see why I did it later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, the data type of this is a whole number. Now this is basic theory from Excel. Every date is actually a number that corresponds with which day after January 1st of 1900 this is, right? So all these numbers, that's what they tell you. And now, where are my first date of my calendar and the last date of my calendar? Where they're actually the minimum of this and the maximum of this, all right? So let's get those. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to rename this to base. I always do that. It's not necessary, but I always do it. And then I would go select the first column, go to transform statistics and minimum. So give me the minimum of that column. And what is that? Well, I'm going to rename that to min date, right? So my first date. Now, what I could do is I could go now give me an extra step go back to base and then go to the second one, transform statistics and maximum, and then rename this to max year. But usually what I would do is I'll just take this min year code. I will copy it. I will go to the new step and let me just make this bigger. So I'll go for a new step. I will paste the min year code and I'll just change the things I need. So that should be max and this should be date two, All right? And that's it, All right? So right in one step, I got what? I got my max date. So that's my maximum date. Now I have my minimum, I have my maximum and I'm just going to go new blank step and I'm going to make use of this code. I don't know if you've seen this before, but in M code, you can create a list of numbers like this. You can say one to 10. Enter and there you have a list of numbers from one to 10, which is cool, but it's not what I need. I need a list of numbers starting from where? Well, min date is a number, right? And now you can probably guess what's going to come here max date is also a number. So combine the two and I get a list of numbers from the smallest one to the largest one. Well, this is actually my calendar, but at this point it's just a list. So first thing I need to do is I need to convert this to a table and there's a command up here that says to table. So convert this to a table, just click okay. Change the name of this to date and change the type of this column to date. And there it is. Those are the dates that we need. And this basically is our calendar, right? And now we're going to add the columns that we also need. And this is where Power Query is even more powerful because you can do this. You can go, okay, so this add column from a date, year, year. And that's it. There's our year column. Start with a year again, add column, date, month, and just give me month. But now go back to date, add column, date, 
month and this time give me name of month. All right, you see how cool that is? I'm just adding columns that I would need and it's writing the formulas for me, right? Uh, but now let's do a, let's do one that will be kind of tricky. So I want to do this. I want to say, here's my date, add a column quarter and just give me quarter of year, right? But usually this is not what I'm looking for. Usually I would be looking for something like this, something that would say Q1, Q2, Q3s, right? So quarter one, quarter two, or QTR or whatever. So I need to change this into what I want it to be. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, Q, right? So give me a letter Q before that, and then join that to this, but this should actually be text. So get text from this, right? Like this, and then that will not be an integer type. So let's delete that and let's say that will be uh, type text, right? So that's what this will be, and there it is quarter, Q1, Q2. And we could go on, we could be adding, you can see that you can add a tremendous amount of uh, data here just by saying that's my date column, now add a column from date and give me, you know, weeks, give me days, give me weekdays, whatever you want. But basically this is how you create a calendar table in your Power Query. And exactly the same procedure can be applied in Power BI, right? Because it's the same Power Query engine, more or less. So at this point, I'm just going to say close and load. At this point, it's also going to load the helper table, but I'm going to get rid of that one later. So let's just see what we got. So it loaded the, well, it loaded everything at this point. Um, now the helper table, I'm just going to get rid of it because this should be, I still need the query, right? Because that one helps create my calendar, but I don't want it to load. So the way I'm gonna change this is I'm just gonna delete this sheet. So I'm gonna delete the H calendar sheet and now this one becomes connection only. Now the calendar I do need, usually I would load it to the data model, right? Because that's what you wanna do. But for this video, this is enough. So that is how you create a date table in your Power Query. And it's dynamic, right? When my data changes, this will change. And that's that's the power of it. And even though the probably the process is a bit longer than the previous two were, you can see how powerful it is. And hopefully you're gonna give this a try. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And in the next one, we're going to take the calendar table and we're going to expand on it. So we're going to talk about the extended calendar table, which allows you to do so much more. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there and yeah, see you on the next one.